set off when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings. It looks like one of those scenes of an old building being purposely dynamited and blown up. Anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. The way the structure is collapsing, this was the result of something that was planned. It's not accidental that the first tower just happened to collapse and then the second tower just happened to collapse in exactly the same way. How they accomplished this, we don't know. The building collapsed to dust. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized from river to river. There was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. In addition to those pictures we've all seen too much on television before, when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. If, if they had deadly, deadly yes, if there were plans yeah. to take down a building, boom, 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 boom. I heard a second explosion. There was a uh, heavy-duty explosion. Then there was a secondary explosion, and then the subsequent collapses. The explosion blew, and it knocked everybody over. To me, it sounded like an explosion. It sounded like gunfire. Bang, 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 bang. And then all of a sudden, three big explosions. And we heard a big explosion coming down. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. We saw some kind of explosion. By the force of the explosion. Big explosion. Blew it back into the eighth floor. Then we get to the lobby. This is a big explosion. The lobby took the zoo a bomb. Had exploded there. A huge explosion now raining debris. It's been a huge explosion. Huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We just witnessed some kind of follow up explosion. We heard a very loud blast explosion. That is another bomb going off. He thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. Planted in the building. I don't think anybody could have predicted that they would try to use an airplane as a missile, a hijacked airplane as a missile. Nobody in our government at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes into buildings. No specific threat involving uh, really domestic operation or involving uh, what happened obviously, uh, the city's uh, airliner and so forth. There uh, were uh, no warning signs that I'm aware of. USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target was the World Trade Center. In confidential documents from the Philippines obtained by CNN, the plan was clear. He will board any American commercial aircraft, control its cockpit, and dive it at the CIA headquarters. Other buildings targeted the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. Security in counterterrorism was blinking red, in the words of George Tennant, that the warnings of an imminent attack were so severe that something dramatic should have been done. It was unparalleled. Uh, instead, our president went on a month-long vacation. The head of Pakistani intelligence at the ISI, Mahmoud Ahmed, requested Omar Sheikh to wire $100,000 to Mohammed Atta, who was the lead hijacker. Did hijacker Mohammed Atta received wire transfers via Pakistan. The man sending the money to Atta is believed to be Ahmed Umar Saeed Sheikh. Omar Sheikh admitted he was supported by the Pakistan government's intelligence service, the ISI.
although we are told that four or five of the alleged hijackers were on each of the flights. If so, their names should have been on the flight manifest. But the flight manifests that have been released contain neither the names of the alleged hijackers nor any Arab names whatsoever. We know that the men who were supposedly the hijackers had their houses, cars, credit cards paid for by the U.S. government. They were, in truth, agents. Evidence was also apparently planted. The passport of one of the hijackers on Flight 11 was allegedly found in the rubble. Goes through the fireball, through the side of the plane, and comes down the ground unscathed. But something happened. For six months, they reported they had this passport. Boy, we've got it. We've got the proof. And then the guy stood up and was alive. Several of these 19 men are still alive. Of course we're after Saddam Hussein, I mean uh, Bin Laden, he's, he's, he's... January 2001, the Bush administration orders the FBI and intelligence agencies to back off investigations involving the Bin Laden family, including two of Osama Bin Laden's relatives, who were living, guess where, in Falls Church, Virginia, right next to CIA headquarters. When he was already America's most wanted criminal, he reportedly spent two weeks in the American hospital in Dubai, was treated by an American doctor, and visited by the local CIA agent. We have not seen one piece of evidence that links Osama bin Laden directly to the planning stages of September 11th. This failure to provide proof was later said to be unnecessary because bin Laden, in a video allegedly found in Afghanistan, admitted responsibility for the attacks. This confession is now widely cited as proof. But the man in this video has darker skin, fuller cheeks, and a broader nose than the Osama bin Laden of all other videos. We again seem to have planted evidence. In 1976, Osama's older brother Salim bin Laden hired a man in Texas by the name of Jim Bath to handle all the investments in the United States for the bin Laden family. Jim Bath also happens to be a personal, almost lifelong friend and former Air National Guard pilot with George W. Bush. The connections between the Bushes and the Bin Ladens become much more clear when George Herbert Walker Bush made trips to Saudi Arabia in 1998 and 2000 to meet with the Bin Laden family on behalf of a company called the Carlyle Group. 